Good morning. It is good to see everyone this morning as we gather to worship today and come in this morning to celebrate that it is All Saints Day. This is a day that we as congregation remember those who have passed away in the last year and commemorate them once more to God and commemorate ourselves to each other in our grief. And today is also a day that we as a congregation are recognizing other saints within our congregation. Uh, all those saints who are 85 years of age or older, which we have 12 that we're recognizing today, which is a pretty amazing amount of saints to be able to recognize in that category. So thank you to all the family and friends who have come to celebrate with them uh, today. We do have our lunch and immediately following worship today, so we look forward to seeing all of you come with us down to the Fellowship Hall after service today to continue that celebration uh, downstairs. This week, we do have our last episode from the current uh, season that we've been watching through the Chosen TV series on Wednesday, 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's not too late, you can still come, even if you haven't seen the previous episodes. Uh, it's, it provides a really uh, fantastic conversation after each episode. We're usually there for a little while discussing what we saw, the different plot elements, how it connects into the scripture stories, and so on. So uh, please do consider joining us this week as we finish up the current season that we've been watching. And then uh, to start preparing ourselves for the end of the year celebrations, I know where did 2024 go that we're already talking end of year. But on November 24th, we're going to do our Advent and Christmas decorating here in the worship space. And we're going to include a little dessert potluck with that. We'll just bring your desserts. We'll set up a small table here in the, the little gathering space, the narthex, and we'll share some desserts. And then we'll get our uh, treats and, and greenery and lights and candles and everything that we get set up for, for the Christmas season all uh, set up here uh, that morning. So that's going to be part of uh, the 24th. So those are some of the announcements that I wanted to share as we head into worship today. It is the first Sunday of the month, and this is the Sunday of the month that we do recognize birthdays within the congregation and anniversaries. So who has a birthday here in November? See, Ray's got his hand up. Are we being pointing at Ted back there? Ted's got a birthday. Jan's got a birthday. Glenna's birthday is this month. Judy's birthday is this month. Got a lot of birthdays to celebrate. Oh, Theodore's birthday is this month. Happy birthday, Theodore. <laughs> a lot of birthdays this month. Well, this is a good month to celebrate aging for the next year. Let's sing happy birthday to our dear loved ones. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear loved ones. Happy birthday to you. All right. And do we have any uh, anniversaries this month of November to be recognized here with us? <laughs> All right. Not seeing any November anniversaries. All right. Well, again, congratulations to those who are celebrating in the many ways they are this month. For those who are visiting with us today, our worship service is posted here on the screens. There may be a couple of liturgical elements that we as congregation are still learning that I will uh, point out what page they are on in the hymnal when we get to that, especially in the communion portion of our liturgy today. But otherwise, everything's up here for us to follow along with today. We're going to prepare for our prelude music by sharing together in our mission statement. Gathered by God, we live our faith with compassion, grace, gratitude, and joy.
privilege is to stand as we start fresh this morning with our moment of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our refuge, our delight, our beginning and our end. Amen. Let us come in truth before the one who loves us and has freed us from sin. Eternal One, robed in majesty and mercy, we confess that sin has taken hold of us, and we are complicit in its power. We are disturbed in spirit, and our hearts cannot rest. Unbind us and set us free. Lead us again to the waters of rebirth, that we may live just and generous lives for the good of your world and the care of our neighbors following in the servant way of Jesus. Amen. These words are trustworthy and true. Christ bore our sins once for all on the cross, swallowing up death forever. For his sake you are forgiven, and God remembers your sin no more. Let your heart be glad again and rejoice in your salvation. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment now to share a sign of God's peace with one another. Our opening in this morning is the first four verses of For All the Saints. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I'm going to invite you to be seated as we remember our saints and then also celebrate our saints today. O God of the Pilgrim's Way, we give thanks for those in generations past who have been examples for us of God's love at work in the world. As we pray, we know that we are surrounded by this great rejoicing cloud of witnesses. Yet even as we name these holy ancestors, we thank God for others whose names we never knew or have forgotten, who showed us the meaning of life in Christ. 
Let's sing the first two verses of Lord of All Hopefulness.
celebrate those saints who are here with us today. For blessed Cecil Lovedall, we give thanks. For blessed Betty Bruin, we give thanks. For blessed Don Reynolds, we give thanks. I know he's not with us today. He's over at his apartment in Woodridge in Galesburg. For blessed Dean Sandstrom, we give thanks. For blessed Eloise Swisher, we give thanks. For blessed Marlene Molden, we give thanks. For blessed Glenna Martin, we give thanks. For blessed Rose Youngquist, we give thanks. And I heard Margaret could join us today, but for Mar blessed Margaret Huxbacher, we give thanks. And Maureen isn't able to be with us, but for Laureen Nelson, we give thanks. And for Blessed Isla Roseberry, we give thanks. She couldn't join us today either, but we celebrate her. And our oldest member, we definitely give thanks. For Blessed Carol Hansen, we give thanks. I'm so glad you were able to join us this morning, Carol. Let's take a moment and recognize and celebrate all our saints with applause. We sing the final two verses of that. Rise up, O saints of God. See, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. A reading from Revelation chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among the mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel.
Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid them? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was laying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Uh, if you pay any attention to the news, social media, or just cultural waves of information, however we receive it, one of the prevailing messages that we receive out in the world is that we are to be afraid, to be scared. We're to be afraid of the diagnosis, we're to be afraid of the neighbor, we're to be afraid of the stranger, we're to be afraid of the immigrant, we're to be afraid of somebody who thinks even slightly different from us. We're to be afraid of science. Be afraid. That is the prevailing message of the world. And it has been that way for a very long time. We're not the first generation to encounter a worldly message of be afraid. But we are not just in the world, we are also in this kingdom space. The message that we have in this space is very different. In this kingdom space, the message that we have to proclaim is a message of hope, a message of renewal, a couple examples of stories today that demonstrate why we who come here as people of faith to be in this kingdom space long for this message of hope. One of those stories comes from Revelation. This is a, the, the final book in the New Testament. It is a book that contains a lot of, of wild imagery. There's a lot there to unpack in the, the metaphors that John, the author of that book, uses. But the prevailing theme that he, as the author of that message, gives to his readers of his day and age 2,000 years ago and to us today is the message of hope. The scene in chapter 21 of a new heaven and a new earth coming into this space is that message of hope. It says that all the destruction and things that we're told to be afraid about there, that's not going to win the day. The newness that God is bringing into the world is going to win the day. And this is not something that is going to take us from here somewhere else. This is God bringing that newness here where we are. This is a tremendous shift in thinking, especially when there are signs of wars and famines and droughts and all the other major disasters and catastrophes that can happen. 
newness is coming here to us. The author John, who writes the Revelation, and the author John, who writes the Gospel of John, and I know it gets confusing because there's a lot of people named John around here in the Scripture, so these are different Johns. They have similar themes, though, of hope. The Gospel writer John uses this story that we heard read from chapter 11, the last sign that Jesus offers before Holy Week, again, as a message of hope. Here a man has died, he's been dead for four days, Jesus has delayed his journey to the sisters of Lazarus, even though they are close friends, even though they know each other very well. He delays because he's waiting for the right moment for the glory of God to be shown. This gives us hope that even us who are in the midst of our moments of grief, and our moments of anxiety, and our moments of fears, our moments of wondering and doubt, and our moments of questioning, when, Lord, are you going to come and bring renewal in this setting that we are in, John is letting us know that Jesus is going to be here. Jesus is going to be in the midst of whatever it is we're going through. And he shows us in two ways. The first way is the accompaniment moment when Jesus comes and sits with Martha and weeps with Martha. Martha is in deep grief, a grief that we all know one way or another, from losing dear close ones, from spouses, to parents, to children, to uncles and aunts, to dear friends. We all know this grief that Martha has in the story. Jesus sits in that moment, showing us we are not alone. We're not alone in weeping of the ways of this world. We're not alone in weeping the pains of this world. Jesus, the Son of God, weeps with us that this is how the world is. And while we tend to ascribe to God big words like omnipotent and all-powerful and can do anything and everything at the snap of a finger, the mystery of why the world continues to have these pains, and these sufferings, and these losses. It's a mystery that we continue to endure, and which God says, I'm not leaving you alone in those sufferings, in those moments of great mystery, of deep, deep pains. And out of that, then, Jesus gives us the sign that he is who he said he was, that he is the Son of God, that he is the one to bring him to the world of new kingdom. He is the one to proclaim a message of hope. He is able to turn to that tomb and call Lazarus out of it. This is a singular moment in Scripture that Jesus does this. He hasn't gone to any other tombs to do this. He's only here. But he's doing it to again demonstrate the hope that we have. That one day, indeed, Jesus will stand at our own tombs and call us by name, and we shall come out. And those things that have bound us up into death will be loosed from us and will be set free in an eternal kingdom of peace and joy. While that is a future someday experience for us, it's also a demonstration that today, those things that still bind us up, those strips of fear, those strips of anxiety, those, those bands of, of death around us, Jesus is standing here now calling to us to call us out of that space of fear, of sadness, of tremendous anxieties, into a space of hope 
and renewal. That is why we gather here in this worship space on a weekly basis to praise the one who is able to call us out of that area of death, of anxiety, of fear, and lift us into a space of hope and joy and peace. It is a hope and joy and peace that is incomplete because we're not in the complete yet, but it is a hope and joy and a peace that sustains us here and now until we are at the completeness. We celebrated today two of the blessed saints of our congregation who this year have entered that completeness. Kirk and Krista both now know the fullness of the joy and peace of that kingdom that is to come. And we wait. And we do not wait alone. We wait in community. And we celebrate today those saints for whom their entire lives have been gathered in this space or one like it, celebrating that same hope and joy. And those who have lived the longest, those elders amongst us, they have endured that the suffering longer than we have. They have experienced the hope and the joy longer than we have. They have the wisdom to know how that hope and joy has sustained them. And they are the ones we get to turn to to say, how does this hope and peace and joy sustain you? And then we get to sit and listen. And hear the stories of 85, of 90, of 97 years of hope and peace and joy sustaining through everything that one can endure. That is why we celebrate those elders because their faith demonstrates to us why we continue to come here. Growing into this hope, growing into this peace and joy is not something that we just, just get to snap our fingers and have. We wish sometimes we could just snap our fingers and all those messages of fear and anger and, and hatred that are out there in the world can just go away. But it doesn't. We wish we could just snap our fingers and everything would be made perfectly well right away. But it isn't. And this is where the mystery of faith comes into play. There are those for whom they do not understand the concept of faith peace, joy, and hope that we have in this space, we do come. And even if we don't fully understand it, even if we don't fully get how it sustains us, we come again and again and again. We come to be revived by the waters of baptism. We come to be nourished again by the bread and the wine of communion. We come to have our spirits filled again with the Word of God so that maybe we can begin to understand a little bit more of that hope, of that joy, and that peace today. Which is why we do this together as community. The story that John gives us in the Gospel, you might have heard this little nugget who was by, and Jesus came and saw Martha weeping, and the Jews who had come out to weep with her. Martha was not alone. Mary was not alone. These sisters were not isolated in their grief. The members of their own community had come to sit with them and be with them. Because this kingdom that we are a part of is not a kingdom of isolation. This is not a kingdom of pulling us apart and separating us. This is a kingdom of community. Jesus accompanying us in this moment is not just Jesus coming down from heaven and standing here somehow imaginarily or really right next to us. We are the physical presence of Christ. We are the body of Christ. We are Christ's representation here amongst us. So when one of us is in the midst of grief, when one of us is suffering, when one of us doesn't understand what we're going through, we have community to come and surround us 
not because we have the right platitude to say and get through it, not because we have the right expression of what to say at the moment, not because we have all the answers, but because sometimes just sitting there and weeping together is all we need in the moment of accompaniment to get through. Because being together is a sign of hope. It's the physical presence of peace. And one day we'll be able to look back on it and say, the joy I had in that moment was not being alone. This is how these stories, and others like it throughout scriptures, help us, encourage us, and grow us as people of faith. As people who live not in a world of fear and anger, of sadness and, and hopeless grief, but as people who together live in a kingdom of hope and peace and joy. May those saints whose lives we remember today encourage us. May those saints whose lives continue to be celebrated, may they continue to also encourage us as we continue to be together as the kingdom of God, living out not just here but throughout the world, God's hope and peace and joy. Amen. I'd like you to stand as we sing our hymn of the day when the pain of the world surrounds us.
that in a community of filled with hope, peace, and joy, we confess our faith now using these words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. O God of resurrection, you call us by name and raise us to life. Rouse your church from slumber, where we have held back in fear or shame, unbind us. Embolden in us our proclamation of your good news, that all may know about abundant life. Merciful God, O God of creation, you have founded your world on rivers and seas. Preserve fresh water sources and the creatures who call them home. Heal places of pollution and nourish places of drought. Merciful God, O God of the earth, you reign over all the nations and peoples. Inspire us with the wisdom of discernment as we elect legislatures and leaders. May they govern with justice and uphold the dignity of all people. Merciful God, O God of heaven, you make your home among mortals. Come alongside those who weep this day. Befriend all who are lonely. Encourage those in despair and heal any who are suffering, especially Linda, Isla, Kathy, Dean, Emily, Cecil, Janet, Brian, Anna, Suzanne, Wes, Jake, and Chris. Abide with your faithful ones in love, merciful God. O oh God who serves, you set before us a feast of rich food. Sustain our ministries of fellowship and hospitality. Strengthen the hands and hearts of all who prepare and serve food for our nourishment. Merciful God. O oh God, Alpha and Omega, we give thanks for your faithful ones who are now at peace with you. With all your saints, we praise you, for you have swallowed up death forever. Merciful God. We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. For our offerings, we do collect our offerings in the baskets located uh, here in the, underneath that window by the narthex. Throughout this month, our vision and purpose offering is going to support our daycare and preschool center here. Uh, every uh, Christmas season, uh, the director, uh, Miss Bobby, will purchase a number of items that are Christmas gifts to the daycare and to the preschool center. They buy those, they wrap them, and then on a day just ahead of Christmas, before they go on their Christmas break, the kids all open those gifts up. Their books, their puzzles, their toys, their other things like that to help uh, the center out. So uh, Vision Purpose this month is going to support that. So all that money we'll be able to collect now. And um, at the beginning of the month, we'll be able to present Ms. Bobby with that so that she can prepare uh, what she needs for the daycare this year. So that is this month's Vision and Purpose offering. Now for offerings gathered through many and various ways, given with the spirit of joy and thankfulness, we pray. Lord Jesus, our portion and our cup, you offered yourself in love for the world, and in this meal you nourish us with your life. Fill us with your abundance, that we may feed the hungry and welcome the stranger, trusting in your name. Amen. Let us sing the first two verses of We Give Thee But Thy Name.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. opened his arms to all. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took his cup, and he gave, and gave thanks, and he gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Sing now, Lamb of God.
are present with us today are welcome to come and receive his gift. We will serve today here at the altar railing, so you'll come down each aisle, and uh, we'll, we'll, and then if you're not able to come forward, we will be bringing the communion back to you uh, this morning. Let us pray. Faithful God, you have spread before us a feast of rich food and drink in the body and blood of your Son. Now send us out to labor with you in service to the world you have made and among the people you have made your home. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Righteous stands, we sing our closing hymn. It's the final three verses of For All the Saints. <coughs> that place we just wish would never end. Well, guess what? It doesn't have to today. We all join each other downstairs immediately following this for our celebration meal. So please do come down, down those stairs and enjoy the soups and other snacks that have been prepared for us today. Now receive your benediction. The Ancient One throned, the Crucified One now risen, the Indwelling One poured out. Bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing our benediction refrain, verse 4. From we give thee what they know. Thanks be to God.